Enter into the border of horror. I'm starting the documentary now. This is fucking 273 pounds of fight. Piss. <laughs> One third vinegar just on the top, and the piss sort of separates like a black and tan. Piss, vinegar, fuck you. <laughs> Because Walker had a dog. Cut. Because <laughs> I got nothing. I got no job. It's full of the select. The, the, it's full of the. It's full of select choices of city slicker meat. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Hey, from the unnatural pal free show. When I like to get my feet back on, I grab myself a can of city boy. Roy McCoy's City Boy Choice Chowder. Now, you can pick this up at Roy McCoy's Rock and Ravenous Roadside Chop and Slot Barbecue. You can order it online at MadisonHorror.com. And that would be, when I say MadisonHorror.com, then you hop in and say, what are you going to say? Um, I don't know. I didn't have a script for this. Um, when I was born, both my mother and father were addicted to injection heroin. My grandmother, when I was six months old, came out to America to see us and my elder brother. My older brother was a mess and wearing a diaper, dirty and wearing uh, maybe a day old diaper, rashes everywhere. And I had, I was colicky and my grandmother said, if I give you 10,000 American dollars, will you let me take the boys back to Ireland to their father's country and raise them up. And my mother said, $10,000? How much heroin can I buy with that? So she immediately jumped on it. So that's how I came out. It's kind of weird if you think about it. My brother, and my brother subsequently became a heroin addict when we started hanging out with my mother. When we got older, we moved to America and started hanging out with my mother. My brother was banging with her, you know, banging dope. Yeah. Not banging, <laughs> but banging dope yeah. with my mother. It's crazy. Not true, this one's called uh, Fiddler's Green. Just tell me how shipmates I'm taking a trip mates and I'll see you someday on Fiddler's Green. Now Fiddler's Green is the place I know well. We don't go to heaven, but you don't go to hell. And the first day come jumping right out of the sea. And there's bottles of rum growing on every tree.
to come on there and tell them about the disclaimer, Roy. I am getting that part, Mama. Take a bow, Roy. I'm doing it, Mama. So what did you guys come up with for the show? All right, I've got some ideas. Do I need the notebook? Okay, let's take all the sucking and let's put that aside for a while. But you were talking about Mama. I heard we talking were, about Mama. We were talking John's about idea Mama. was is that we might want to do, dub over Mama's voice so that I don't get caught up in the lines trying to go from Mama to me. Is if we could dub Mom in, maybe a little, what would you say, hollow or something where she sounded otherworldly? Just some other voice so it doesn't sound like you're saying, because sometimes it sounds like you're doing the same voice. Like you're just switching. You can tell someone different, but it's pretty close to the to what voice you're already doing mm-hmm. as Roy McCoy. That would seem, there might have been a malfunction in my instrument. Exactly. But just have him lock up and like... Yeah, looked sure. stuck and then overdub the voice on top of that and then he could snap back into Roy McCoy oh Roy you know you saved my voice from here out please may I have some cock please right. where did Roy McCoy come from was yeah. this like an incestuous uh, ravenous rockin' chef that was like, buried inside you that you had to bring out See, I never was behind the whole chef thing. The only reason I wear the chef hat is because it's more white area to put red on. So I never felt like I was really rocking Roy. I always felt like I was just like this hillbilly fucking, uh, retarded, but like gets information like secondhand or, you know, like so everything he says is a little off. Or in some way askew, like he didn't understand the instructions, you know, so everything is a little different. And his mama died, but he doesn't know it, and he talks to her. And I really do think it might work better if we dub it, because that would spare me the lines where I could, you know, pause for this, count, wait, go. Give me time to remember your other lines, too. Right. Teleprompters now, teleprompters. Yeah. Fucking 2010. <laughs> teleprompters, Rich. And every time I do the Roy McCoy thing, I fucking really try to just bring it. Whatever it is at the moment. Whatever feels like, you know, I'm going to try to get a reaction out of the crew. If I can hear the crew snicker or chuckle, then, you know, I feel like I'm working to them like an audience and trying to fucking... And uh, Rich looks like fucking hell. He fu- <laughs> insists on this fucking makeup that makes him look like a fucking rejected Muppet. And uh, our camera's shite. I'm trying to work around that. Got a lot of people starting to show support. That's cool. Uh, we had fucking. I heard that day. <laughs> heard what? <laughs> <laughs> it's better than a fucking green-faced ass clown. Go! Saturday night, 23 a.m. Bordell of I did it, Mama. I did it. Just, the Just let me remind you, here in the Bordello, we like our girls shaved. Right. <laughs> Can it, does it record? Again, that came out a little creepy. <laughs> you kind of set them at an angle. Yeah. You got a tape. Just put one stripe all the way down the middle and then do that. That's some thick shit, though, man. You're going to have to go over it. That's what happened. This is a lot of gray. Yeah. An angle, you say. A lot of anger in here. Let me swear, I can feel them shaking. I can see them shaking. It shakes shakes like a fucking chihuahua. Not hurting yet? No. Then it's not working. The only patch that's done right is... What is that in the rope? What is that? (laughs) (laughs) No. 
Yeah. You look like Gene Wilder right now. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'm done. Is that it? How do I know? Okay, Jose Bear. I don't know what you're doing up there, but. I don't know who Jose. Very nice. <laughs> You're getting to that age now where your sperm aren't as active. Oh, they're pretty active. Well, they're active, but they're lazier. No, they're when pretty... When you're 17, they can go through four inches of steel. Oh, they're excitable. Oh, they're don't... Right, well, don't demean your, me. I beg your pardon, sir. Yeah, really, because that's... Now, they'll, they'll destroy your face. I'm just talking because last night I had a dream about your sperm. Really? Yeah, I was like, can they really go through four inches of steel? And then part of me was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can. And then part of me is, I, I don't know. We all get older. Yeah, I could, I could definitely rip through your eyes. Skull, I don't know. Eyes, easily. Mr. Foster, how did you get involved with MadisonHorror.com? You must help me. Through one of your creepy little flyers. <laughs> like, hey, would you like to be a harlot? <laughs> and my wife was like, should we press charges? <laughs> Who the fuck? And my wife was like, did you notice the creepy guy downstairs put cardboard on his window and then one of those stickers? She didn't know whether to call the condo association or not at first. Are you serious? Yeah. She didn't fucking know you from Adam. Creepy Adam. You knew me then, didn't you? No. I knew that you smoked. You sm I, my air conditioner was broke. I was trying to quit smoking. The fucking window was open. You'd stand under it and smoke, and then I'd come down and bum one off you with the next, some excuse like, uh, hey, you know, I got AIDS, so I only got a month to live. Can I get a smoke off you? <laughs> That's why you couldn't find your socks. Can I get a smoke off? <laughs> 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 Holy shit. <laughs> what was it? My tongue hurts and I can't find my socks. Can I get a smoke off? Oh, that's funny. I'm in my rib cramp. That's true because I came up with some bullshit stuff. <laughs> and then I, you take the cigarette upstairs and smoke out the window and watch me smoking. That was the creepiest. Part. I get nervous around people. What are you going to do? I mean, unless I know them. Right. Like, I know John and you. And, but right. if I get, like, uh, okay, perfect example. I'm talking to a doctor last week, and the very next thing I know, I'm laying on the floor, and my mother in law is putting her purse under my head. And her purse smelled like hand lotion and ass. <laughs> It's like, what the fuck did you put in your... Is that Thai food in your fucking purse? <laughs> and she's a sweetheart. I love my mother-in-law, but her fucking purse stinks. Hey, I got that little problem taken care of. <laughs> well, that's... Uh, oh, oh, well, that's good. How'd things go? Well, you could say we had us an ornithological disaster slash hyphen massacre, basically a level seven. Well, how did the uh, the, the guy, the, the 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 client, how did he fare? Well, he did better than the parents, but he feels back. Broke leg, got shot, snake bit, <laughs> grabbed nine sucking puppies up a hill by a rope. Speaking of Roy, it's our old friend Roy McCoy from Roy McCoy's Rocket and Ravenous Roadside Chop and Slap Barbecue. Well, hello there, freak show. I was just watching your little moving picture lane here, and it occurred to me that's nice to see some religion portrayed here on the show. Man, what's up with that Bible you got carrying there? Well, this here is to symbolize that I am now an ordained minister and I'm going to be down holding sermons at the Church of the Disembowled Soul every Sunday, so y'all can come on down if you like. Tell them about the plug, Roy! Oh, yes, MadisonHorror.com. I told them I'm going to get it. No, Roy, are you, are you kidding me, Roy? Are you, you're, you're, you're an ordained minister now? Yes, and you can all stick around for our Super Sunday Loose Meat Sandwich with a secret savory loose meat sandwich sauce. Yeah. Let me get all the time you want. 
Uh, I was all stressed out about Stephanie being in the hospital, so I checked myself in for the night to be for a med check. And they ask you all these questions, like, uh, you know, like, ball, red, ribbon. Okay, um, how old are you? What, what's your birthday? What were the three words? And I would intentionally go, fish, knife, gun. And look at her like just dead eyed. And I was thinking, I'm gonna get some meds out of this deal. And they didn't med me, they gave me a fucking Benadryl. <laughs> but it worked, I went out like a baby. Huh? I, okay. I don't want, okay, don't tell everybody my secret. The trick to being Danny is don't think long term. Think. 30 minutes in. Anything beyond that, you're a dick licker. <laughs> Alright, I got nothing. I have an idea for this show. The it seems like we've been putting all this time and energy into trying to organize girls to show up. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And I mean, sometimes they don't. I mean, those cunts don't even fucking call. Eh? They're really busy. Doing what? <laughs> Twatting it? It's fucking... You're 22 years old, what the fuck are you doing? Paying your mortgage? No, you fucking chomping hogan dogs out of your parents' freezer. Just fucking show up and do the film that you said you would, or I'll fucking choke you in an alley. Oh, we can't say that. <laughs> no, you should. That's gold. <laughs> I don't mean choke them literally, but I mean, like, really beat them with a fucking telephone cord dipped in oil. Something that won't leave a mark, but certainly a memory. You know, I think this is the first time I've had to host the show alone. <laughs> we got a losing season on a day and a half, Rico. show. <laughs> Roy, where have you been hiding? We haven't seen you in quite a while. Are things that busy down at the old shopping slot? Well, you know I have some serious artistic skill. You've seen some of the finest treats from the Frankie's Meat Dollar Street. And I've created... And I've decided to step it up a little now, Chet. Oh, great. I can just imagine where this is going. What's that demented uh, little mind here has got planned now? We're chasing down flatlanders for our savory loose meat sandwiches and fun. But I needed to express my artistic abilities a little more. So I decided to become a sculptor. Maybe put some of these works of mine into one of those fancy art gallery things. Uh, what are you planning on sculpting? Meat loaf out of mashed potatoes? Mars is going to be called The Living Dead. I found this here little fella on my way to the bordello and I thought he might be a perfect model for my <laughs> first creation. Roy, that's our house pet, my bloody buddy. What, what did you do? <laughs> well, I was just trying to pet him a little and well, his head just popped right off. Don't worry though, there, Ricky. I can fix this up, no problem, no problem at all. Well, I guess we're just going to have to see about that. we got to get the film rolling. Uh, like I said, uh, uh, tonight's film was directed by Roger Corman and was released in 1959. The film stars Dick Miller and was originally entitled The Living Dead. Get back, folks, and enjoy the nice film of Bucket of Blood coming out of you like two buckets of poop right now. Woo-hoo! Down syndrome thing in the knee and the yes. Down syndrome. No, he's, he's, no, he's always talking about Down syndrome. I know, but was that like. That was the most awful thing of the night. Did you see me try to navigate out of that? It was just like watching an animal after they've been hit by a car. You don't know what to do. So I noticed you were just watching me like. I was just like. 
That was the biggest downer I've been around in a while, man. That was fucking horrible, dude. I tried to navigate out of that, and then I just said, fuck it, and started laughing and went, went and poured a drink. I just said, fuck it. Um, I'm not even going to try. You can't with that I think Down syndromes are neat. I used to know one. Bye. Pick it up, put it down, put it beep. Take it to the bridge room. Uh. Me and Rich are going to start a fight club right here, right now. Does this not look like pedophile syndrome? Not allowed within a hundred yards of a school or playground. Hey, boys and girls, it's it's. <laughs> This is not going to be a, a usual thing, but I'm going to have a few whiskeys tonight. Just a couple of friends. And, um, I assure you that this is what happened. I'm disheartened. Uh, there was a horror host here. I thought we would talk about the genre. Uh, guys a bit of it. Um, I don't know the guy, so I'm not going to judge people. Um, uh, words like dick liquor come to mind. And, and like snail and pudge fuck and just like just like what the fuck dude if you don't like what you're doing can we have your fucking hey buddy can we have your spot because you don't like what you're doing you don't even care about the genre you wouldn't even play the snuff flick when it was given to you free those fucking handouts and if you think about it, how hard is it to find a fucking movie it's like right Guess what? You're not the champion of the universe, Shira. Your fucking show is washed up and your buddy picks his foot. What the fuck is that? Is that fucking toe jam or fucking game green? And why can't he stop picking it? What the fuck? Every I've seen two fucking episodes and both of them is picking his fucking foot. Isn't it picked yet? Is it picked yet? There's a fucking weekly thing? But how, how do you how, how do you get your uh, the worst horror host in Madison off your doorstep? You pay him for the pizza. <laughs> I mean, it's shorter, but... Shit better not it. <laughs> it's not, oh, it's going to. It's not it's fucking Jose E. Bear oh, here. I mean, look at Rich. He's thinner. Thinner. I mean, you're fucking... So, I mean, it's not... You're not fucking sitting here repairing the Mona Lisa. You <laughs> <laughs> give him a fucking haircut. Hey, the Mona Lisa smiling. Yeah, I'm just saying. It's like, okay, you got a haircut. It's shorter. You don't go fucking walking around like you're fucking Jose Bear's chief client. You got a fucking haircut. You barely got fucking hair on. <laughs> Great cut. Danny's got nothing. Looks like the, <laughs> it's like the fourth time he said cut. Danny's got nothing. <laughs> it's not gonna Looks stop like though. Stripper's pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to say, cut that prick, I was just fucking with you, I like you. I just want you out of front of you so I can have a fucking Did cigarette. you see how he was like when I was like just trying to <laughs> chat with that guy? Is he always like that? Yeah, and then when he's got something to say that you can't understand because he talks away. <laughs> <laughs> On this week's show, we're going to fuck. <laughs> My buddy here is going to fucking dig his toenail out. <laughs> uh, from between his teeth. From between his teeth. <laughs> and then I swear to little tiny baby Jesus, if you go back and look at the footage, toe to nose, 
toe to nose. It's like he's snorting toe jam dust. It's like that's his medicine. Toe jam dust. I it's like, it. dude, you've got a certain style. And what that style is is disgusting. <laughs> I just didn't feel like, I just didn't feel anything about that. Those guys suck. I think we had to crush them, see them driven before us, hear the lamentation of their women. <laughs> he did mention that about Black Water Brides of Satan. He's like, dude, if I showed that, they'd be like, guess who's not on the 11 o'clock spot anymore? I'm like, gee, I would have had to slide into that one, wouldn't I? Let there be no mistake. He's going down. <laughs> We need that spot. No, so no, that we no, can now we're that. openly talking about sabotage. We probably shouldn't be doing that because then it's not sabotage. Then it's just public knowledge that we're we're going for the juggler. We're taking them down. We're taking the eleven to one spot with Bordello of Horror. Fuck Saturday Night Frights. <laughs> oh, that was gay. Let me pick my fucking foot in celebration of this treat. You know, I'm gonna sit here and pick my toes. What's his name, Doc? Doc. And why the fuck do you gotta rub a dog's genitals during the show? <laughs> why are they loving up on them dogs like that? I've had many dogs, and I don't fucking get all up in their junk. I've had many dogs. I probably touched a dog cock maybe twice in my whole life. Once was on a dare. You know. The other one was personal. I've and never, I've, I've, never touched, I've never touched a dog. It's like I seen some pink, and I was like, "What is that? What is that again?" Rather be you. That tastes rather weird. Be, rather be dead than <laughs> the head like the tip of a dick of a dog. <laughs> yep, that that would taste weird. <laughs> you can assume what it tastes like. I mean, that's sort of a dog cocky. Sort of taste. That's only if you're familiar with dog cock. Red rocket, red rocket, come out of your pocket. How long have you hung out with him and not known that he exploits himself all the time? <laughs> right on. Um, you know. Oh, that's <laughs> Dr. I think Crypto's just like if you say so. <laughs> I always wanted a doctor. Name, name. And then throw him to the scrotum. <laughs> what have you got on that demented mind of yours, Roy? I've been thinking about joining that one of them there dancing troops I've been practicing with with Ooh. one of them operations to and fly to the Dolby. Now if you two will give me a little room, I'll give you a little taste is that of the honey that is my I'm out of here. The yeah. music plays. <laughs> Okay, I'm cleaning house. You get out of here. Get, get out of here, boy. Get out. Oh, God. I love the fact that Doc addresses the community, asking them to practice abstinence. Oh. Well, hey there, guys. Speaking of a good reason for abstinence. Well, things didn't go too well. The pianist was out of tune, so I chased him around so I got him by the organ. <laughs> you did not. You did not. Do yep, that. let's just say he'll be making the great contribution to this week's Sunday special. This <laughs> stunk because when you put it in, it'd be eaten away like alien blood. <laughs> you gotta go. So here's. Yes, no, I don't. Have you ever seen an Irish wolfhound? Yeah. They're the biggest dog in the world. Yeah. They're even bigger than St. Bernard. Mm -hmm. They look like a mini horse. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, my grandfather had about, I don't know, 12 of them because the bitch had a litter 
and they kept the litter, and then the bitch made it with one of the kids, and then they had another litter, and they never got rid of the dogs. So they would eat about 30 pounds of meat a day Good God. between the 12 dogs. And uh, he'd feed them every third day this big load of meat and all this shit because he was of the old-fashioned schools. If you overfeed your dogs, then they won't be loyal. So my grandfather was fucked up in all kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. But uh, my grandmother had this baby named Michael. It was back in the 1930s. This doesn't help. And uh, Michael died of scarlet fever. And they had a little white coffin sitting on the dining room table. And we were going to wake him out. Or not we, I wasn't there for 40 years, to, to, for 40 years after this. It's just, I know this to be a family story. They were going to wake Michael out in the morning. The dogs got in the house because everybody was grieving and didn't close the door right. They took the baby off the dining room table and fought over it and tore it to pieces, a two-year-old baby, a toddler. And my grandmother came down in the morning, you know, in her fancy dress, wet, waiting to wake the, the baby out, and saw in the kitchen what had happened. And she fucking snapped, took an axe, went out to the dog's house and killed all the dogs with an axe, chopped them up one by one, just came after him, just wouldn't stop, just kept going till all the dogs had stopped yelping. And nobody ever cleaned it up where the dog's house was. Nobody ever cleaned it up, so they just sort of rotted into the ground, bones and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandmother then collapsed for two weeks in a semi-coma, where she is semi-conscious, because psychologically she was fucking ruined. Mm -hmm. My grandfather's dogs had eaten her baby, and then she had killed the dogs. And there was only some of the baby left, like the head and part of the face. And that was pretty heavy stuff. Yeah, it is. So we never had, my grandmother wouldn't let us have pets as a child, when I was a child, because she hated dogs mm -hmm. and hamsters for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> let me keep him! His name's Russell! I want to keep him! <laughs> What? That's a true story, though, about the dogs and my Uncle Mike. Well, that's fucking crazy. Would have been my Uncle Mike if he had been oh, alive. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Shit. I didn't realize you were getting Danny, all fucking decked out. No. Don't touch it. No. Whatever you do, don't no. touch it. No. Don't want to. Wait, did you say don't touch it? No, I said touch it as much as you want. Okay, well, then I refuse. I will not. Bend to your will, sir. Did he say don't touch it? Don't touch it. I don't remember. I fucking kick it. Good idea. Fuck you! Do not. Fuck you and your policies, government boy. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> you, bureaucratic cunt. Fuck you! <laughs> Sex pistols. I just kicked your computer. I just can't you jump there. Let's do the Rich, you made that happen. Right. Pity oh, your drunk the camera fell over. Mm -hmm. Danny, did you do that? Do what? Kick the camera over after I had it already fucking set? Well, you tried to fucking govern me with your English <laughs> government, and I said no, sir. You tried to fucking okay, govern no more me. whiskey for Danny. Oh, it's got to be about whiskey. Hey, right, you see what your problem is? Turn that part so it's straight. It's a good thing I knocked it over because it wasn't even calibrated. What the? What do you got there? This is my first piece of artist creation. I call it Frozen Bunny. Now, where did you get the inspiration for that? Well, I had it up, buddy, petted him too hard. He decided to fall out on me, so I decided to make him immortalize him in clay. According to the president said by Martin Luther King Jr., our four follower. So, uh, Roy, what do you got planned for your next creation? Enjoy the rest of the show. I sure will. <laughs> Yeah.
it's too dark. Hello, lady. This is I, Senor Balsa. And you shall not reach me for your deep in there. You shall not. You got nothing here to tell us before. You only fall out so low with your own if you can't talk to Clara. Hello, lady. This is Dr. Victor Victoria, I thought you would have been a little taller. Yeah, we heard you were some tough cookie. <laughs> Sorry, I've never seen such a fashion disaster. Is that an outfit or a crime scene? Where did you get that hair, don't? What are you talking about, Victoria? That lisp you got makes Truman Capote look like Rocky Balboa. Yeah, are you trying to be Chris Angel or Sweetie Cindy Green? We're here to get our friend Roy back. What use is he to you? I sure could use me another huff of that chloroform over here if it ain't too much trouble, Steve. Excuse me, Skankerella. Did I say you could talk in my lair? It turns out your little backwoods friend here has some tidbits of technology that I need to communicate with the mothership. Mothership. Well, that's a mama's boy turn if I ever heard me. This asshole tinfoil hat here is blocking the coordinates that I need to coordinate with the Bigfoots. The aliens are going to drop Bigfoots and infest America, and then I will control the world. You are a transmitting? Get me some more of that from over here. I'm a transmitting. <laughs> and nobody's getting cratefuls of big feet. So me and Viv are going to make the rules from now on. The only coordinates you're going to get are directions to the closest legal facility. Fred Roy! I really could give me another hit of that chloroform, but for now, here's back to the movie trailer killer. Oh, you feel me? Mm -hmm. uh, here's the reason I don't sell it. Cause it pisses me off that like some little fucking punk has got some weed that he got from some grower. Probably a gentleman grower gave this kid a good deal on some pot. A gentleman grower? And this kid turns around and tries grower? to call it medical grade and sells it for $65. American. A fucking eighth. And you're just like, what? And the eighth is 3.1 grams. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. You know what? Go fuck yourself, America, when it comes to pot. It's this country, and Ireland, and England, and Scotland have ruined pot. They have. They've de de denigrated it. The fucking degenerate weed now. It's because Westerners didn't know how to use it correctly. Fish. You see some little Asian dude spent the whole fucking life gathering up shrimp and smoking some fucking beautiful Thai plant. And they never had a social problem with it. The elders of the village smoke it. You know. And now it's all fucking... I hate it. I'm Daniel Lee Foster. I'm a member of RollItUp.org. Hydroponics International. And normal. And I say this. 
what I smoke and how I grow it is none of the fucking business. Ringu. <laughs> mushy, mushy. Hey. Good as good as hell. Hey. Hey. And thing. Like, it's Truman Capote. <laughs> I, I, would, I wouldn't go that, that far, that far. He killed him. He killed him. He killed him. He's dead and gone. Perfect making a party. Things, and I see things. Um, after I've been up for three or four days without sleep, I start to break down, and my vision just becomes like, what the fuck? You know, like I'll see empty cars and their headrests look like heads. And it's always my mother and my father looking at me. And that's true, and that's without whiskey. That's without whiskey. That's, that's without weed, whiskey, or anything. Because I'll stay up for days and then my vision starts to break down and my hearing, and I start hearing things. It's like, Danny killed, Danny killed, Danny killed, Danny killed. Not true. I don't hear getting killed, but I'm definitely uh, medically treated. I'm definitely, you know, in that category of people that need treatment. I've had uh, five breakdowns in this year alone where I had to be hospitalized. They're tired of looking at me at UW Mental. Where is that facility at? Fifth floor. B wing over uh, at university. Yep. Yeah. Fifth floor B wing. Coffee in the morning, drugs at night. Sounds like normal life. Kinda. So why fucking collapse, China? I used to be a productive. I had my own business. Um, it was doing really well for a couple of years now. I had uh, employees, Jacob, the bartender at O'Grady's, his little brother Kyle was my main employee, and we had a guy named Big Tor. Big Tor with a V, as in Big Tor. So we had him. We are doing roughing jobs. Don't it just crashed? It just crashed. My mother had died of cancer, and I was the one that nursed her, took care of her all the way to the end, and something about the last three days of her life just went, <coughs> and just stuck with me like fucking gorilla glue. And I lost a lot of ground since then, and I keep trying to fight for ground, I keep trying to fight for a reason to be here. And I keep losing, but I'm trying again, and again, and again. You two again. What is it now? This is the perfect ending for a perfectly horrific day. Horrific? What made your day so horrific? Did you run out of oil all day? Ever since you dime store floozy spoiled my last plan, Senior Balzac has become mysteriously unavailable. What has that got to do with Roy? I took this perfectly good monkey brain and transplanted it into your dullard friend here in hopes of turning him into my new henchman. Hello, ladies. Why don't you two look especially lovely this evening? Dr. Victoria's dilemma is a puzzlement to me. I believe the experiment has worked flawlessly. Shut up, you bubbling baffoon. I'm supposed to be able to control your will. Now it seems you have a will of your own. Even if it is a monkey brain. Oh, but contraire, my good doctor. It is you who have been hoisted by your own petard. I would never find myself in liaison with the likes of an evil yet peculiar little man like you. Face it, Victor, your shenanigans are finished. You've basted your last brain. No, you'll not take me out of here again. You'll not take me back there. You have no idea what it takes to get a little nighttime moisturizer in a hellhole like that.
right, Roy, let's get you back to the bordello and into your right mind. I'm more than a little creeped out by the way you're acting. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy the rest of tonight's celluloid fiasco, the Jesse James meets Frankenstein's daughter. Don't get your fucking makeup no, on no, the no, I did hear this the other day. You got this on tape, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mama said knock you out. Don't get your fucking makeup on. <laughs> Holy fuck. I'm drunk. Fuck yes. Just a good time to my friends. Uh, Rich, go get your makeup on. I'm going to hit you. I gotta go, I gotta go, uh... No. You're going to the hospital, sir. But, when you recover, you will be an internet sensation. I'm going to hit you so hard that you have to have nine surgeries. <laughs> there will be fucking plastic surgeons called back from Rwanda to put you back together, man. Uh, all the king's horses, all the king's man. I don't care if they do or not. No, I'm just you know kidding. Saying? I wouldn't hit you that hard. But I would hit you hard enough to make us fucking famous. I got nothing. You know he's filming. I gotta be. That's I nobody would believe. This nobody would believe right. this it's shit. Okay. This is if what he's I filming. This. That was idea one oh one. Ways to make rich famous that he <laughs> fucked off and said no to. One oh one. That's one oh one. The first idea to make him completely fucking famous more than chocolate rain and he's a fuck off beep beep let's go to 102 you know what this, this would actually instead of being destructive this would be a perfect time to maybe capture something on tape about scripting about something don't you think 102 all right um Whitney, come out of your shell. We love you. You're a pretty girl. You're doing a great job. Just come out of your shell and be more boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Um, Susie, please come and do the show. You're fucking fine. I mean, um, she is cute. And her eyes would really pop on video. Let's go for, um... I don't know. Where do you, what, do you, what do you want to do next for Roy McCoy? What do you want to do next? Oh, you mean for me personally? For I, Roy I McCoy. I want to fucking get up there and I'm going to do a pop and lock. Straight up pop and lock. We got it already. No, but... We got the best pop I got and lock we could ever do. I, I got there's only four moves to the pop and lock. I, five maybe? Five maybe? I don't know. I'll fucking find something to do. I'll fucking do. I did pop and lock. I did karate. Next, I'll do fucking. I'll be fucking Ralph Macchio from fucking uh, Karate Kid. I'll be all. Ooh. <laughs> you know, get all funky on them. I don't know. What the fuck do you want to do? Whatever you want to do, it's your imagination. You are no, the way you not my imagination. You're the guy in the middle of the fucking circus with the red jacket with the tails. <laughs> you're the ringmaster. No. So, you fucking dream it up and we'll do it on film and it'll be goofy and funny and campy and fun. Actually, you are kind of right about that, aren't you? Oh, I never wanted to be that guy. I uh, wanted. You, it's your fucking show. I'm, I'm just fucking juice off the berry. I mean, <laughs> the left one or the right Rich one? Rich writes the shit. He comes up with it, and then I fucking misquote him. That's what I do. Is I misquote him. 
he'll write a script, I'll fuck it up, I'll do the best I can, that's a take, finally let's wrap it no, up. No, 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 you and I work better together than I've worked with any of the girls outside of the one. I believe you if you poured me a whiskey. I will. I will. believe you if you, you want a whiskey. Will. From Jungle no, Jungle. seriously. I mean, you can Maybe see it. Talk? You can see it in the bloopers that that you actually filmed, John. Mm -hmm. That him and I, it's like even in the don't bloopers, use my name in just, this. It's much more comfortable, and it's it's much more there. So you're saying it's high art? No, it's just interaction, better interaction. We're just a couple slaps, Dave. On the level of high art. Oops, I've fallen and I can't get up. Um, um, I got a show to put together yet. Yeah. Alright, let's put a show together. Show must go on. You're Kermit the fucking frog. <laughs> let's put the show on. the go! So I did not want to get any blood on my pants, but apparently... There's a shit ton of it. <laughs> the phone never rings that long. Never ever. Did you have the same issues coming out? Roman, who got to start working with Roger Corman, and went on to produce and direct quite a few great films of his own. Now, normally I'd be joined by one of the harlots of horror, but it's, uh, of course, it's a busy season here, and the girls are out raising some funds, uh, along with a, a few other things. Uh, to try and get the show's budget up, uh, that would probably help. I think this is the first time I've had to host the show alone. Well, we would want you to do that there now, freak. Roy, we're even hiding. We haven't seen you in quite a while. Things that busy down at the, uh, the old chopping slop? Well, you know, I have some serious artistic skills. You seen some of the finest treats from the French meats on the streets I've created besides stepping up at now. Oh, well, great. I can just imagine where this is going. What's that demented mind of yours got planned now? <laughs> keep it up, keep on keeping on, you know? She's getting better. Ah, Reality. The very thing I hate most. But I mean, you've got some experience doing sound different I, bands. I did it for about two years. So, how would you say that you ever did sound for like death metal bands? I sure as hell would say that, yes. Okay. I've done it for a lot of them. All we have right now is... Bow down. We are gods. Clear the path. Deep and wide. Submit to our whims. Surrender your women. Then run and hide. We are gods. That's what we got so far. <laughs> Do you think that would work with like a... And a bass player. Oh, yeah. Your power trio. <laughs> that would work totally. We are God. <laughs> that would definitely work because usually you can't understand a fucking thing <coughs> that metal bands are saying. You know, but just come out with the. Here's what it is. It's just it's like walking into a room with a complete direction, no pants, no underwear, wear, and just put it. Hello. I don't think it's anything like Most that. Most certainly. Most certainly, madam. I, don't I would like another little bit of cracker with the meat and cheese and just a hint of olive on it. I'm not sure I know what you're doing that. You know what I'm saying? It's like walking no. into a room with a fucking 12-incher. You know, big, big round as a wiffle ball bat. Where it looks like the second half of a, wi a wedding cake. <laughs> you know, it's just... <laughs> I just fucking walk in and be like, I'll take the table nearest the kitchen, thank you. 
is I would lay my boot fast. I want it hard and fast. By the way, the waitress puts down my name. <laughs> Call him up later, fuck him. And it's like that. You walk into every situation like that. So that's what this song is about, is like bow down. That's what that song's about. We are gods. You know, it's like that concept is where like, we're not fellow humans. Mm. We just landed. <laughs> Clank, clank, clank. And some of us have instruments. Others have harmonicas. And we just... It's not a harmonica, not an instrument. Uh, this going to be the harmonica. I mean, and it's going to be... I'm not going to be all selfish harmonica and like prima donna. Mm -hmm. You know, throw a whole bunch of harmonica in it. But drop a little when they're just fucking having a jam session. Be like... Uh, Oh, what's that song we always play from Black Sabbath, you and I? What's the Black War Sabbath? Pigs? No. War Pigs. No. The Wizard. The Wizard. The Wizard. Dan it. Dan it. No, I'm not playing the guitar at all. In the fields of bodies burning. That's War Pigs. Yeah, it's war pigs. Yes, the war machine <laughs> keeps turning. You gotta admit, some of that stuff was pretty cool. From <coughs> yeah, we need to when get Randy to Rhodes it. was alive, fucking like Ozzy Osbourne was the shit. Remember when I was a young teenager? Ozzy Osbourne was about as butt metal as we would go. You know, we were more into yeah, like right. the bollocks. Sex Pistols. I liked some of what the Dead Kennedys were doing, uh, but I we listened to Ozzy too. Admittedly, a little butt rock, mm -hmm. and you have to admit, Ozzy, even being his crazy self, was still that fucking spandex butt rock. Always fucking hated seeing people in spandex and tennis shoes. Yeah. You know, come to rock me out, and dude, I can see your pecker out, night. You know what? Yeah, that's not very Show up in a fucking pair of work pants, because you're here to fucking work. You know, you're here to fucking rock. And that's what I'm saying, is like, with this stuff, what should be the name of our heavy metal band that we rank this stuff so Just Trough. Jizz Trough. Jizz Trough is a good one. The what name's Jizz Trough. Yeah. Rich. Jizz Trough. <laughs> that's us. So, this is basically what we're working on. We are gods. Is that your first single? No, that's the first cut on the first album. The guy we are gods. Rock and roll. But the name is Jazz Trough. Right. Let there be no mistake. Album title? Is there another band named Jazz Trough? There has to be. We'll have to Google. All right. If we Google it. And there's another band named Jazz Trough where we saw they get them better. Ah! They can't be better. Google it. Nothing can be better than that. <clears throat> Jizz Trough. <clears throat> Bow down. We are gods. Clear our path. Demand right. Submit to our whims. Surrender your women. Then run and hide. We are gods. <laughs> fuck yeah! You know that? <laughs> Holy fuck! Something like that. Did you find any jizz trough? I mean, it I might know, be on some like list of like filthy things to say, out. but I've been in bands called Big Wet Stabber, Pig Knuckle. <laughs> Um, oh, what would we call, oh, I don't know, I've been in too many fucking stupid little bands, I just, but, and then I've been like, hey, you can come play with us for a very low price a couple nights, bands, like, fucking, and I love my mother-in-law, but since my wife has been in the hospital, my mother-in-law insists on doing the laundry for me. And now I have a tiny sweater. I used to love this sweater. Now I look like I'm shitting. 
Yay, pick me up! <laughs> pick me up! <laughs> a big fat pig. We should, we should dress Roy in that for uh, like a special occasion or something. Remember when Get I put on your... Up. He's, the other night we stepped outside for a smoke because it was getting smoky in here. Rich hands me his leather jacket and I put on and it's like, <laughs> fat guy in a little coat. I could have, <coughs> but I didn't. <laughs> With celebrity directors and all sorts of people coming at you, what you talking about? Well, that's exactly, exactly. All right, let's see here. Going to... We're recording. Are we, are we recording now? Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, wait. No. No, we're not. In seven, five, oh, five, three, two, nine, one, six. That's my old girlfriend's phone number. Are you shooting? Ah, uh, yes, we're shooting. All right. <laughs> hey, this here is Roy McCoy coming at you. Kung Fu style, saying we got feature films here at the Bordeller of Lord. We got, what? I just got to bring your hand down. Oh. You're covering up your face. Oh. Can't cover up the money. Can't cover up the money. It's exactly right. <laughs> This is the an electric bill. Hey, this here is Roy McCoy. <laughs> Coming at you Kung Fu style with all kinds of horror movies, feature films, bloody little secret shorts, interviews. Hey, here at MadisonHorror.com. Hey, <laughs> that's right. We're going to bring it in. Shout to Tiger Hidden something or other. <laughs> Technology dude over here, that's not I know, good. John scares me. Anyway, I told you how much lately that I love you. John scares me because you don't know what might come out in the wash. I am not double fisting it, by the way. Uh, oh, double fist. No, 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 that goes back to the rape tape. We don't want to get that. <laughs> He's doing more of a reach out. There is no rape tape. The rape tape. There is no rape tape. Well, John, I tend to disagree with you a little on that one because it's really? almost as if I had raped a bunch of girls. That's what that tape implies. It just sounds like you're an enthusiast. A rape enthusiast? Yeah. Guilty! <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> it was Michael Fox, but they called him Mikey the Fox because he was... Very slippery, like a fox. We're walking around downtown. Well, we both worked at the same restaurant at the time called Arches, where we were forced to wear black shirts with a paisley vest. <laughs> so here's Mikey and I walking through an empty parking lot, both wearing black shirts and paisley vests, the two of us. A car pulls up and goes, how much is it to park here? Mikey says three dollars. The guy gives Mikey three dollars and pulls into a parking spot. Another car pulls up, 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 another car pulls up until the parking lot is fucking almost it blasting full and me and Mikey have all this money in our pockets and we go over to Kells Bar which is like right across the street from the parking lot and the dude walks in the door and says you don't fuck with skinheads and he was one of the people we charged for parking and then he found out it was a free lot and he came over to fuck our night up and he did a pretty good job of it. He fucked our night up. He made us look like a couple of dicks. 
there's a warning to you. What's the warning? Don't do parking scams. Yeah, I guess that is the that is the lesson. Wifey had it right the whole time. My wife is all about you live your life, you go to school, you don't break the law, you live your life. I'm all about if I get a fucking chance I'm going to break the law. You know, I have to be doing something at all times that is raging against, or at least grinding against the machine. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> How could I not be? European dude's wife, take one. And the winner is... I think I was laughing too hard for that one. The Hurt Locker. Paul and Jay Austin and Ray Beckett. This is the second one. When you take a dog to the groomers, they trim their nails, they cut their hair, they give them a bath, and then they squeeze out their anal gland. Anybody that argues this is a fact, Call me. We Call never, me. We never took our dogs to a groomer. We had labs. We never had a need to get them grooming. Squeeze their buttholes. Mm, I don't. I don't like that. They squeeze their buttholes. Yeah, they do. Uh, I. I really don't know about that. That's true. I want it. I want sixty-six to love it. That's all I care about. This is her baby. And she and I have become pretty good friends, actually. A little bit more animated this time. Let's get my arms moving. Let's... <sighs> Serenity now. Two. My name is Rocky and Roy. I'm the real McCoy. I'm the highest of the low among the whore Paloy. I'm a handyman and I can feel you crack. And if that don't turn you on, I got a barbecue shack. It's a little run down. The food is kind of crappy. But give me half a chance and you'll know just who's your pappy. I love loose women and moonshine booze. I once seen a Bigfoot wearing high heels shoes. I'm a little big boned and I'm not too close to mama. I love you like a porno when I voted for Obama. I beg your double diddly ding dong pardon, Rich. I thought you were. Uh, turns out you're just a. <laughs> so. You didn't suck that much, you let them throw it right on you. And we'd take all of our food money and buy alcohol wow. just so we'd have to take these weird jobs, my brother and I. Public access. Zero half over me. We were grave diggers. We were hay buckers. Sheep skinners. Skin and sheep. We got were hung up by the feet. Still alive. In the hay No. The sheep would come down the line hung up by the back feet going. Ah! And then some guy would slit their throat, and then they keep coming down the line, and it was our job to rip the skin off them. Clamp it down, that's what makes us land leather jackets. Mm -hmm. It's a skin off them. I go home with like black under my fingernails from fucking blood. And so tired, too tired to take a shower after what, like 14 hours at the killing yard. That wasn't half as bad as when I was a little kid. My father, my grandfather ran a piggery, which isn't where you raise the pigs and feed the pigs. It's where the farmers bring the pigs to be slaughtered. My grandfather had a goat gun, like in No Country for Old Men, but he didn't use it because it required that he refill the oxygen tank or the, the pressure tank. So what he would do is just do them old fashioned, had a butcher knife this long, and the blade was only that wide because it had been sharpened for 60 years. Mm -hmm. And then he would take the pigs 
and me and my brother were just... Well, my brother made the mistake of naming a pig Wilbur after we seen the movie Charlotte's Web. And my grandfather made my brother grab that piglet out of the rack, took him over to the shop house, and made my brother do him old-fashioned. Wilbur. God damn. And then we had to eat Wilbur. That was a, a life lesson. Is you don't name pigs. <laughs> you don't name pigs. My yeah, grandfather thought it was, he was trying to teach us how to survive though. Mm -hmm. So it was important to him that like, uh, we looked at the livestock and the pigs and the sheep as a source of meat and wool. We didn't look at them as like companion animals. And it was important to him that we didn't. So I understand his logic behind making my brother do that. Mm -hmm. But it was so psychologically damaging to me and my brother sure. that that's why farmers are weird. Because they have to be. Farmers have to be weird. I mean, mm -hmm. you raise these animals up from the babies in some cases. Like I said, we wrote, we raised sheep, but we didn't slaughter them. They were fucking wool sheep. And when they got too old and got too mangy, they would just get sick and we'd have the vet put them down. We didn't put them down for meat. They were wool sheep. Except for the belly wool, which is yellow. And that's the cheap wool. Mm. Yeah, because sheep piss up themselves. Did not know that. They piss up themselves to get scent on them for mating. Especially the rams will piss really? all the way up to the neck. Huh. Had a ram take me out. I went like this when I was 18 to a ram. <laughs> and he fucking came and got me. He came and got me. I have a scar on, up here on my head from where he just fucking plastered me and all my friends were like you were out cold you were out cold and I go I wasn't out cold I was stunned no you were out cold <laughs> how old were you? 18 oh. head butted around <laughs> I just I put my head down to this ram and he was feisty his name was Gunner and I just went hurra, 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 and he just came up fucking charging and went and fucking put me down god damn and then my friends were like, yeah, and then he fucked you while you were out. He fucked you. I was like, no, he didn't. I was stunned, not out cold. Because I remember the whole thing. I just heard, like, traffic, you know, like, ringing and, like, commotion going on. And my eyes were rolled back and I seen lights. But I never felt like I was really out cold. Mm -hmm. I just felt like I was, like, uh, right, right. concussioned, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> he fucked you while you were out. <laughs> We had this horse named Danny Boy. And it was a big fucking, uh, not Arabian, uh, but some quarter horse mix. It was just a fat country horse, really. And uh, somebody stood by the road and shot him with rifles and killed him. Hmm. And we didn't know who, but my grandfather suspected it was the neighbors. So my grandfather set their house on fire. And then they had the police out. And then my grandfather and them went back and forth. You shot my horse. You shot my house on fire. You shot my horse. Secret to life, you do that at least three times a week. She is yours. Period. I like that. That's true. Is be kind to you, lady. Um, she's looking after you. 
she's worrying about you no matter where you are and what you're doing. She is always worrying about you. If you're not right there sitting next to her, she is worrying about you. That's what they do. Third, do you fucking share? The wife has all these duties in the Bible. But in the real world, it's about both of you having a fucking job. You go to work, you come home, you love each other, whatever. But both of you should fucking load up the dishwasher. Both of you should rinse out that bowl. Both of you should vacuum up whatever. And just make your lives about joy and not about bills. Because bills will crush you. That's life in America. Bills will stack on you like... That's life in America. That's what... That's the whole deal. And then they'll say, here's the doctor. 30 bucks a visit copay. Gonna run the finger up the ass and make sure you're all right. Boop. Here's your money. Thank you for that. Very good day, sir. Move along. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Don't hide in your apartment. Don't give in to the feelings of uh, incrimination or like, judgment. And don't build a tinfoil hat and try to block any waves that are coming in. But just fucking go to work, get up, get your ass out of bed, and go to work. I do that. Or die. And every single moment of every single day, I'm completely fucking like a rabbit with its foot on fire. Just... <laughs> but... Good grace, I have friends like Rich and Bambi, and I talk to them about what's going on in my head, and they uh, try to put me on the right path, and John, I'll tell you this. I'm 28 years old.
you've got your hair, you've got your hair color still. You can buck four or five times a day. But by the time you're 40, the, the thing that matters most is what you've invested in people in your life. You know, like you invest money in the bank, you invest, you know, your time into learning a skill, you invest your whole self into whatever. But by the time you're my age, it's who, who, not what, who you've invested your whole self into. And I joke and I kid about tits and ass. But my wife is my whole fucking soul. And not just because it rhymes, just because. And I've been so scared, and I've been acting such a fool. <sighs> but she is everything I am and that I want to be and us and where's my little tiny and hurry up and get home soon mm -hmm. the last little piggy is get home soon I met Kitty Cafe and a wee baby put behind on the back tied on with an old cudgel in her hand to drive the old donkey on inquiring at every farmer's house along the road she'd pass oh who will have it a wee baby oh who will come flog my lars <laughs> is that it you think we got it